Hello and welcome back to the vlog. It's been a minute since we did one and I'm very excited for this one. In just a couple weeks, I have my biggest market of the year. Over 200,000 people come to this thing and I wouldn't be surprised if even more than that come. Last year I did this market and I was picked clean. I had literally nothing left to sell by the end of it. It was crazy. I'm already feeling a little bit strapped for time just because I know how much effort goes into it, but I think that I'm going to be okay this year. I wanted to take you through my process of what it takes to put on a market. If you're planning on trying out doing markets or just want to see what goes into the process, this video is for you. So why don't we head to the studio and get started on the first things. In order to make custom stickers, I bought the Canon Ivy. This allows me to make two by three inch stickers of any art print that I have. I like doing this because it gives me a variety of different ones so that if people don't like my couple that I have like a lot of in bulk, they can buy these. And then I have these little plastic bags. My sister actually bought them for some charms that she was using. Um, and then I cut out little pieces of paper like this and I'll put that as a backing. And then I just have like my super old uh, business cards. I'm trying to get rid of them still. So I just put that behind and then I'll just put them all in the plastic bag together and that's it. So I have a whole bunch here. This is one of my oldest ones. It's a painting of me and Fang. And then I have my Britney sticker. I call it my Strawberry Brit. And then I have my Frida sticker. And these are the oldest ones that I have and I have a lot of them. I have like hundreds of them. So I have those and then um, yeah, and then I use the printer to make ones like this. That just provides a little bit of variety, which I like. And if people can't afford a print, then they can afford a little sticker print. So basically there's an app that goes on your phone for this. And then I send all the prints to my phone and I'm able to print them directly from my phone. So it's basically just like a Bluetooth or something. It's pretty cool. I then put a little scrap piece of paper behind it and add a business card. These are super old business cards, but I'm trying to get rid of them, so it's perfect for this. I store any cool scrap papers I have, cut them into the size that'll fit in this bag, and then it's done. If you haven't done a market, you'd be shocked to find out that there's a lot of online parts to it. Since I've done this market and I've decided to invest a little bit more in my setup, I have a, the perfect thing that I need to buy that I'll reveal very soon. In the video I made before this one, I revealed some new prints and these are them. There are so many and we're definitely gonna have to package them to bring them to the market. This was my first print drop since starting my YouTube channel. So I hope that you recognize a bunch of them and remember making them. These prints are 11 by 14s and I think that they're just the perfect size. They're big, but they're not too big. And I do custom sizes as well so people can see them all. And then if they want a different size, they can message me after the market. I just realized I'm almost out of bags and these are now 11 by 14 so I actually don't need the 12 by 18 bags anymore so I'm gonna go ahead and buy these and hope that they come in time and I'm gonna do the other ones for now and as many of these as I can and then I'll switch over to the size that really fits them. So I'm super picky on the bags that I use and these are by clear bags. I'm not gonna gatekeep them. They are so, you can even see like the reflection of the camera from up here, right? My face, like it's so like mirror-esque, like they're so perfect. Just such high quality and they make the prints look better and I didn't really value that when I first started. But after like I tried these ones out, I'm like never going back. Even if they're a little bit more expensive, it's so worth it. They just make everything look so shiny. So now because I'm waiting for the larger sized ones, why don't we do the smaller sized ones? So let's start with Vera Cauliflower. So I'm seeing my first mistake. Everything looks good, right? goes this way. So everything is signed 
on the wrong side and the card is upside down in these ones. Uh, there's always one mistake at least in this process, but at least this one isn't too, too noticeable. At least all the rest of them are fine, so I'm just gonna move on. So this is the next thing we have to do. Maybe guess what it is? If you're still guessing, these are flat pack shelves and I just bought them so I'm actually going to assemble them before I go to the event. A lot of people assemble these once they get there but I don't like to do things the day of. I don't like to be rushed. I like it to be like a very calm day so let's see what these look like. I wish you could smell right now but it smells so much like wood, like that fresh cut wood. So nice. So these flat pack shelves I actually bought off Etsy, but I have seen them on a couple other websites. They also had the option to just buy the template so you could get them like cut out yourself. And I thought that that was a really cool idea if you have someone that's more handy. For me, it was a matter of time. So I, although I love doing things with my hands and I would love to make these in the future, I just didn't have the time. And you know, these look great. So I'm really happy with the finished product. As I've said in previous videos, I think I have at least, is that it's nice to have someone else do some of the work for you. So if I can buy something that's pre-done like this, awesome. Okay, so this is how I was kind of thinking of using it, was I could put little pieces in it. I think that's really cute. These are the only ones left from that Pantone challenge, which is crazy. So yeah, I think that these are gonna sell out when I'm there. I really have a good feeling about it. I am shocked that my little originals all fit in here. I can't believe it, but these are all like a hundred dollars. So I think I'm gonna have a little sign peeking up over the top that just says original artworks, a hundred dollars. And then people can take a look at them. And this is a great way to display them. I bought two, right? So my plan for this one is to do some small prints or maybe cards. I'm not really sure yet, but I think that that's my idea. Really besides these balloon cards, I haven't made a single card since I was in a shop. Uh, I think it was in 2020 and 2021. Uh, they were looking for some cards, so I made them and I tried out a couple designs and I just really didn't like making them to be honest. So I only have a couple and the only ones that I really like and the ones that really sell are the ones that I've made for people that I love. I think that these are only available in person. I might have like one or two cards available on my site, but that's it. So it's late Tuesday night and these just arrived, which is crazy. That means that they're a full day early. So I'm gonna use that opportunity to get started. Okay, so these are the square ones for eight by eight. Looking nice, very nice. These are the eight and a half by 11s. And this is the 11 by 14, but I got 11 by 17 because the 14, I just like last minute realized that they might be a little bit small. They were 11 and a half. So I just wasn't sure if the edge was gonna stick out because the prints were a 14 and a half. So just as I was about to package these, I realized that they're all not stamped yet. And these aren't either. So you guys have already seen me do a lot of the stamping and packaging. So I figured maybe we could do like a little mix in of Q and A while I do this. You don't wanna watch this whole process. You don't have to do the whole thing. That's what I gotta do, that's my job. So I figured that there were some questions that came in through my DMs um, on Instagram and I figured that I could answer those while I do this project. And I apologize, my studio is disgusting. I look feral and that's just what we cleaned up the office for. So you guys watch me clean it just so I could destroy it again. So that's always lovely. So the first question that I was asked was why do I do markets as an artist? And it's a good question because you don't have to do markets as an artist, especially these types of markets that I do, they're artisan markets. I chose to do them because I feel like for every artist that is not going out there, I'm going out there. 
Um, so I'm able to get the sales in person that someone else would definitely not get if they were just posting online. I live in a city that just doesn't have that much culture, to be honest. And I don't know a lot of people that follow a lot of artists um, from where I am, unless they like, you know, have gone out the way and maybe there's like a couple of them. So when I decided to start Flanzella, I knew that I wanted to be surrounded by more artists and learn more. There just really isn't a community space for us here, really. Um, so I wanted to meet other artists first. Secondly, yeah, I just don't think that a lot of artists were going to go out and do the same thing that I'm doing. And you bet it, whenever I go to full art events, I see people that I've never seen before. Um, but people come to my booth and they're like, oh, I remember you. And that's really cool because basically there's an overlap in consumer. And most sales take like seven times to see your product. Uh, that's like a marketing rule of thumb. So the more times that people can see me, the better is how I feel. Obviously, like sometimes they're not worth it. And in my city, they're extremely expensive. I remember <laughs> I was watching someone's YouTube and they're saying like $100 is expensive. And the one that I'm prepping for is cheap in my opinion. And it's three days and $600 for to, to just set up the ground space on the, on the pavement. Now, in the past, I did tons and tons of markets. Like, I, I was doing like one every week and working full time. So I was basically just working like six days a week. It was like unbearable. Um, so I kind of took a break for this year and I just like took a, a look back and was like, is this worth it for me? And a lot of the time the profit was like 200 on top of what I, I guess, paid to be there. Um, and for me, that's just, it's not worth it. Uh, sometimes it is, but I think that like, I decided that there's better ways that I can use my time. Like starting a YouTube, for example, is definitely taking exactly the same amount, if not more time. Um, but it's more uh, sustainable because I don't have to go out and basically work a retail job all day, um, which is kind of how I feel being at markets is, which is kind of the downside to them. But I do think that there is just such a great, um, environment to start as an artist if you're an emerging artist. I've met so many people, learned so much from other people, saw what they're doing, listening to their sales pitch, etc. Uh, that I could not have gotten online. So that's my sales pitch for why to do a market here and there. The next question I got was about the pros and cons of a market, which I think I just kind of did by mistake. Um, but just to add like a little bit of a, a summary on top of that, I think that the pros are meeting people. The cons is the time commitment, the type of labor it is, it's exhausting. And um, and I think that other artists might have better ways to spend their time. Um, if you have very sellable art, you could be like licensing your art, for example. Um, my type of art, obviously we can't, cannot do that um, because of many, many reasons as a collage artist. Um, yeah, hopefully that helps. Now we're gonna package these. The next question was about how many markets I do a year. And that is a good question. I used to do, oh no, these bags aren't gonna fit. Oh my God, they're just gonna fit. Oh, just fitting. Okay, well next time I get the bigger ones. Um, so when I started doing markets, as I said, I was doing them like literally once a week potentially for the good seasons like summer. And that basically wasted my summer away. It was sad. Um, so now I'm just kind of doing what feels right for me. And that number has been like quarterly. So it doesn't need to be an art market specifically, but I like to show face at least once a quarter. Mind this interruption. Look at that extremely tight fit. I'm so lucky that these fit. This was for an eight by eight, and these are eight and a half by eight and a half with the border, so yeesh, I got lucky. And voila, small ones are done. Time to move on to the big ones. So I'm gonna do these while we cover two more questions. Okay, so the next question, one second, is, uh, it was a longer paragraph, but I'm gonna summarize it. So basically the person was saying that they feel bad like selling their art because they're like basically like pushing someone to buy them. Um, and how do you feel like not salesy? Ooh, see, these ones are a little bit looser. It's better. Um, and like, I guess like around that type of subject is like, I feel bad selling my pieces. It makes me feel kind of like gross, if that makes sense. Um, which I totally get, I understand that feeling. But 
I think that like when I'm at markets, I don't think of it as I'm selling someone something that don't want. I'm thinking of it as I'm offering them something that they do want. And maybe their homes are really empty right now. Like maybe they just moved to the city and they have blank walls and they've come straight up to my booth and they wanna fill it with my art. And I'm the only one that's gonna be able to solve that problem for them is how I feel. So in my mind, it feels like good because I'm helping uh, provide a service for people um, that they need fulfilled. And it's like nice for people to buy from a local artist, to be honest. I think that they'd feel way better than buying like one from like an Etsy store that has like thousands and thousands of sales that you know is just like coming straight from China or something um, and had like no love put into it. The word is these ones. I'm touching every single one of these. These are getting a little bit of a, a kiss goodbye from me <laughs> for, on every single one. Sorry, I'm feeling really manic right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I feel like you need to restructure your mindset. I love this one, I've always loved this one. Um, yeah, it's all about like restructuring your mindset and realizing that you are providing something that someone wants and they would not buy it if they did not want it. And I do know what I'm saying is one of those things that is definitely like something you need to practice and it's something that you're not gonna like flip the switch overnight. Um, but maybe I can get that started for you. Maybe this is the epiphany moment where you realize that it's okay to give people things that they want, you know? Okay, and there's one more question that was asked that I thought would be valuable for other people. Someone asked me the advice of what I would give to someone who has never done a market before. And there's definitely a lot of things that I could say, but the biggest thing that I'm gonna say is that you don't really have time to eat. So I usually bring like three Gatorades per day, which I know is crazy, but I end up drinking all of them and I basically just live off Gatorade. Selling art is a sport, period. That's it. Bring as much Gatorade as you can and maybe like granola bars or something that's like really easy to like take a bite of like once in a while. That's basically what I do. I mean, other people definitely take breaks, but it's like then you miss sales. Um, so that's like something that's up to you. Oh my God, this one looks so good. Um, is definitely like a big, big first one. And second one is that look cute, but stay comfortable. Like you're gonna be out there a long day and it depends on how long the ones are, to be honest. The one that I'm doing the longest day is 12 hours, which is insane, especially cause it's been like so hot and air quality is not great right now. I would also highly recommend, this is a tip that someone else gave me from an art show last year, is bring two pairs of shoes. That changed my life. Like halfway through the day when I'm wearing running shoes, I switch to flip flops and then I switch back again and it just makes your feet feel so much better when you're on your feet all day. Oh, and my last tip is to bring a square with you. Whatever you do, buy one of those little squares, if not two of them to have a backup. They are the best thing I've ever done for my business. And with that, uh, we are done. But thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next part of this vlog. I'm literally putting the last box in my car and someone just ordered these too, so I had to pull them out super fast. So funny, good timing. Whoever bought these, you're so lucky. <laughs>
So my plan was to really commit to vlogging, but that went downhill very quickly because I was just so overwhelmed by everything going on. As you can see, so many cool things going on. Similar to last year, it was supposed to rain all weekend long and it ended up being beautiful. These mini displays were amazing. I highly recommend them. And as I've said before, things aren't made for collage and art prints, for example, so I actually bought the thing in the front. It's a vinyl record holder, but now it's a print holder. Also, one of the best things that I've done is I put the large print on the side where people are walking by. This stops people every single time, and then they direct their eyes to the back of the tent where they see the other two. My fatal flaw was I didn't end up getting frames for the larger size prints that I printed, so I didn't sell any of the ones that aren't in frames, but I sold all the ones of the Celebrate. Hello, welcome back to the couch. It is the day after the market and I'm exhausted. I'm very, very tired, but I just wanted to have a little chat about things that I think would be useful for other people to know. Firstly, the big point is that you can't rely on a market to be the same every single year. So for example, last year was so good and this year I did really well, but it was only about 50% of what I made the previous year. That said, I'm still very happy with the results, but yeah, it's just like you can't really rely on an event being the exact same every year. I don't know why that changed because a lot of the people are the same people that came back. Like a lot of people came and they're like, oh, I was hoping you'd be here, you know, and people would see me. But the vibes on the Friday and Saturday were not good for shopping. A lot of people weren't shopping. They were like, I'm on my way here, I'm on my way there. Versus Sunday, like people came early and shopped. Also, as I said, you can't rely on events being the exact same every year. And this year they put a parade in for the morning of the Saturday. And last year, Saturday morning was my best time because people were coming early to shop. And this year that completely got axed. As soon as the parade was over, it was flooded with people and people weren't like shopping in that mood. They were just like, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed with everything that's going on that they didn't want to buy things that moment. Because people were overwhelmed, I did a discount code on my Instagram and that led to about 10 sales, which is awesome. These are the people that get flustered from super big crowds, same as me, but they couldn't make a decision on the day of and then they were able to make a decision online later. So that is a great way to retain sales that you think you're gonna lose from certain uh, experiences that other people are having. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is how important support around you is. So I had about 30 different friend groups come through the show. Uh, which gave me times to take a bathroom break, to just mentally chill. I don't make them stay that long, but it's nice to just have like that little tiny mental break and support and it makes the day go by a lot faster when it's a little bit slower. Without those people, I probably would have been a little bit miserable on some of the days, but because I knew a lot of my friends were coming that I haven't seen in some of them years, it was so nice. I was really certain that all of the originals were going to sell at this market and not a single one did, so you can't really expect what's going to happen. Last year about 5 or 6 of them sold, so that's why I was so willing to have like an entire shelf dedicated to them this year. Last year I was selling them for 90 and this year 100, so I don't know if that made a difference, but I don't think it did. I think it was just like a matter of who's coming to the show. This market is amazing for me because everyone that is my demographic comes to it. It's like people that understand what collage is, they love it, they're interested in it, and they see the prints and I can just tell people are having such a good time going through them. That's why my dream one day is potentially just like opening a storefront that is 100% like art prints and collage dedicated. Definitely something I've been thinking about a lot and seeing people in that exact state where they're flipping through and just like having such a great time and saying how they wish that our city had like a place to go to just like flip through prints and stuff. Because when you go to somewhere like Paris or um, London, there's just like shops where you can just flip through uh, posters like outside and it's so, so lovely, right? So I wonder if that's something that we need to bring to this city. Anyways, overall, I'm just feeling really, really happy. Um, I'm definitely really run down, but I feel really good about everything that happened. It's funny because leading up to this, I was really nervous about it because I knew what it was going to be. But because I'd been to it before, I was able to prep for it. So for example, like three Gatorades a day, bringing a hearty, smaller meals, those types of things are extremely important to uh, ensuring that you're going to be successful at these events. Anyways, if you found this helpful, please give it a like or subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them. Thanks for watching.